After years of filming great white sharks from above, I've watched them interact with all kinds of ocean goers. Each experience is unique, shaped by visibility, movement, and the location in the water. Surfers have the most encounters. Those always make headlines. Boogie boarders, staying closer to shore, see sharks less often. And swimmers, they aren't too far behind. It's the kayakers, especially those that are fishing, that likely cross paths with them more than they realize. But here's the thing, most of these ocean goers never actually see the shark. Stand-up paddle boarders, however, do. And that's what makes their encounters so fascinating. In this video, we're taking a look at some of the most incredible encounters I filmed between paddle boarders and great whites. No one on the water gets a clearer view of great white sharks than a stand up paddle boarder. So, why do stand up paddle boarders have so many encounters? The answer is simple. They have the advantage of height. Standing higher above the water provides a better vantage point, much like my drone footage reveals. The increased altitude allows them to see through the water more clearly, spotting sharks that others, like surfers, kayakers, and swimmers, might never notice. The intriguing part is that regardless of whether the white shark and the human knows where each is, the behavior is most often the same from the shark. White sharks typically prefer to position themselves behind the perceived prey, which is instinctual behavior for many predators. It's their way of staying in a safe zone while sizing up the situation. Here is a classic example of such behavior. Notice how the shark circles to the rear of the paddle border. Now the paddle border sees the shark, and the shark's cover or rather position of security is blown. The shark abandons the chase. Great whites are naturally curious predators, but they are not mindless killers. It's not rare to see a paddleboarder cruising next to a seemingly non-bothered white shark. One of my favorite encounters involved film star Orlando Bloom who found himself paddling alongside a curious eight to nine foot great white. As he told me afterward, the shark was nearly invisible to him until he was right next to it. This demonstrates just how effective the counter shading on a white shark can be. In this clip, the shark was right under his board but he could not see it. The common question paddle boarders ask me when I film their encounters is this, are these sharks dangerous? The reality is, despite their size and reputation, white sharks rarely show aggression toward paddle boarders. Most encounters I film happen in shallow areas where young sharks called juveniles hunt for fish and rays. Unlike their larger adult counterparts, these juveniles are still figuring out their world, often exploring objects and creatures they come across, including equally curious paddle boarders. While it's common to think that it's only juvenile white sharks along the Southern California coastline, I've also witnessed sub-adult and adult white sharks near stand-up paddle borders. This is a sub-adult white shark. Notice it takes the position it learned as a juvenile in its investigation. But something interesting happens with the bigger sharks. Once they see it's a human, they often retreat. Here's another example. In this clip, the 12-foot white shark notices the human and bolts out of the area. Watch this. Notice the speed in which it does so. 
To the layman's eye, one could say, these sharks don't want to be around humans. I truly believe that experienced white sharks know exactly what a human is. Here's the size difference between a juvenile and an adult white shark near shore. A bite from either is not a good situation to be in, but the latter is much more devastating merely because of the size. This image should reinforce the fact that it's not just small juveniles near shore in Southern California. Here's another. The size difference between these two is giant. Paddleboarding is one of the most popular water activities in the ocean. It's also one that gives folks a chance to see a white shark they unlikely would have seen in another way. Most of the time, people are in disbelief when seeing one. I like to think the sharks are also in disbelief when seeing us. Coexisting in their environment means understanding how to protect yourself by taking in as much education about where sharks eat, where they gather, and how not to appear as their prey. People often ask, what would happen if a person fell off a board and splashed? Well, let me show you. It is good to remind ourselves that just as humans make mistakes every single day, sharks, even if they know what a human is, can still misidentify us if the conditions are right. Paddleboarding offers an incredible opportunity to witness great white sharks in their natural habitat. But with that comes the responsibility to understand and respect their behavior. We share their world and it's up to us to coexist safely. Thanks for watching.